Okay, so I don't have anything sewn down yet, but it's given. And mommy look cute. Thanks, girl. So I decided I would vlog today about the process of getting my next pattern ready to go. Last week I worked on putting the pattern together and getting all the measurements right. Um, so it is gonna be available in an extra small to a 3X because that's my size range you know, for right now. And um, I had decided I was gonna test the pattern on, cause I always will do the pattern for myself and then I will test it on like a larger size just so that I make sure that I have um, graded or done the measurements right. Um, and that just, you know, gives me peace of mind that is, it is going to fit for, you know, different sizes of people. So my best friend, she has large boobs. <laughs> and so I'm going to test the pattern on her. Um, and that will be me like testing out one of the larger sizes. And so I already bought the fabric to make hers. And I'm just literally going to do the halter and a skirt down to the knee just so that I can have um, room to be able to like zip it up and take pictures at the top. Um, and then I realized I should get another yard of fabric so I can make myself one too. Um, I need to make it twice because I need to do an instructional video and I need to take pictures. And I just never remember uh, to do both while I'm making one thing. So I'm just going to end up just gonna end up making it twice. So that is what I'm going to do today. And right now I'm driving to Joanne, it's 8.25 a.m. Driving to Joanne to get another um, yard of fabric so that I can make myself one as well. And I think I'm going to stop at Starbucks first and get a medicine ball. Cause my throat just feels a little <laughs> So yeah, anyways, that's what I'm doing. I'm driving to Joanne. If you're new here, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend that may be interested in my content. Follow my sewing pattern page at KGC Sewing Patterns on Instagram. Uh, join my Facebook group, KGC Sewing Patterns on Facebook. Follow my custom clothing page at Karen Gwen Customs on Instagram. And um, when you subscribe on YouTube, be sure to hit that notification bell, change it from personalized to all, so you get notified every time I upload one of these helpful videos. Let's get started. Okay, so I actually just printed um, my draft of the pattern. Um, the pages might be out of order because I forgot to extend the little lip on my printer so they were just shooting out onto the floor. But um, I'm gonna tape this together really quick and then I'll decide which size I'm gonna make first. Um, now, when you guys get your um, version of this pattern, there's gonna be like large uh, numbers shaded gray that are gonna direct you on like what order to put them in, but I'm just printing it for myself and doing a test run, so I don't have all that stuff on there yet. But yeah, I'm just gonna tape this together and then um, make my sample. All you wanna do is gas me. Now we end up in the backseat. Just tryna to get to the bag. We on the same page, you the same way. Only keep the fam around me. So let me know what it's gonna be. I don't plan on getting no sleep. Okay, so I got everything cut out. So here is like the main part. Obviously, this is gonna be cut out of illusion mesh. Um, this is the collar piece and this is the trim piece so this will be up here going around the neck and then this is the trim piece that's going to be serve as like the bias tape going around the edge of the halter okay so i'm only going to be making a halter dress down to the knee i'm not doing a full gown i'm just going to do like a cocktail length dress and these are the things that you're going to need for this project so I'm going to be using a half of a yard of illusion mesh. It stretches a little bit. You're going to want some appliques to cover your mesh so that it's not completely see-through. Um, this, These are likely going to be used for a prom dress, um, but I'm just going to um, use them briefly to test out this pattern. And you're also going to need a yard of 
a stretchy fabric such as spandex or I forget what this is called but I got it from Joanne and it's like a, a foil fabric but it is um, stretchy enough to do this project. It was $20 a yard and I used a coupon so I got one yard for $10 and then you're going to want a zipper that matches. Um, this isn't a perfect match but it is an invisible zipper and it's pink and I already had it so there we go. Okay, so firstly, I'm going to measure myself and figure out what size I want to make. I've been losing a lot of weight lately, so I'm just going to get some updated measurements. And pretty much all you need is your bust and your waist. And you probably also want to measure your length from your shoulder to your waist as well, just so you have the right length of pattern. So um, I have a bra on that has a tiny bit of padding, so I'm just going to squeeze a little bit. Um, when I measure my bust, I get... 35 and a half inches and then when I measure my waist I measure waist like right at belly button level I get we're just gonna say 30 inches I could squeeze more but we're gonna say 30 inches so 35 inches for the bust and 30 inches for the waist and let's check our size chart okay so this is an older uh pattern my size chart across the board is the same for any pattern so um this is an older pattern that only went up to XL. I go up to 3X now, but for a 35 inch bust and a 30 inch waist, that puts me literally right at a size medium. So I'm gonna be making a medium. Okay, so I'm gonna use this pattern more than once. So what I do in order to allow myself to do that is I just cut straight across the pattern at the levels where I'm going to have to bend the fabric. So that's going, not bend the fabric at the level yeah at the levels where i'm gonna have to bend the pattern back so i cut a straight line across here going all the way down to the extra small line and then also if you look closely here this line kind of bends along this line so i'm gonna cut straight across that line as well and uh, as we said we're gonna be making a medium so extra small small medium we're gonna fold back along this line here gonna fold back along this medium line here get that out the way and then fold this back along the medium as well so that puts our pattern at the exact size that we need it to use it for okay so I got my piece of illusion mesh I get my illusion mesh from Fabrictopia and they only charge five dollars a yard some places that you go to might charge like ten um, so it just depends on where you get it from and as you're laying your fabric out you want to just make sure that you have it folded correctly so that you're going to get the stretch you're looking for and You're gonna lay your pattern piece down on top of it and just pin it into place. This is a two-way stretch fabric. So if you cut it the wrong direction, your garment is not going to fit. And I did not make any adjustments to the length of the pattern because my shoulder to waist is right at around 16 inches, which is a good match for this pattern. If the person's shoulder to waist happened to be longer than 16 inches, such as if they had like, you know, a long torso or whatever, say it's like 17 inches, maybe even 18 inches, you would actually want to cut the pattern right here along the bust line and add that extra length in this area right here. But I did not have to do that because I didn't have to make any length adjustments. And same for if you were working with a very short person who had a very short torso, say they only needed, you know, 14 inches, you would just fold right here to decrease the length of the pattern. 
so we got our illusion mesh bodice cutouts i'm just gonna put that to the okay side. next thing you want to do is cut out your fabric for your skirt Let's see which way stretches more okay so you're just gonna take your fabric and actually i'm gonna fold this over twice because i'm gonna be cutting out two sets and i'm gonna cut one set in half for the back piece okay so and i'm gonna lay my mermaid gown pattern down on here you guys know i use this pattern all the time and we are going to pin it in place and fold it back for a size medium. I'm actually gonna time lapse this part. Moving too fast, candy paint with the windows all black, seats turn brulee. What they gon' say? With the top down, screaming money, anything. We up till six in the morning. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is take your main halter piece, which is your illusion mesh fabric, and you're going to take one of your trim pieces and you're gonna begin pinning it to the side of the halter. So this piece, this pink piece, should be pinned to the halter all the way from the collar down to this part right here, right here. So all this down here that's going to be uh, attached to the zipper. So you want your trim to go all the way to this little uh, corner right here. So you're going to take a pin and pin the illusion mesh on top of your stretch fabric at the edge like so and you're going to then take another pin and pin the bottom because the stretch fabric is shorter than the side of the halter and the reason for that is because a triangular pattern going across your body or any top pattern really can create like some gaping like around the boob or armpit area and so if we have this piece of stretch fabric um, pulling the edge of the halter together it's gonna make it hug your body better so that's the logic of why the stretch fabric is not as stretchy or not as long as the edge of the halter it's the same concept for when you do like a collar or an armhole with trim on it you want it to be shorter than the actual edge that you are covering. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now that I have these pinned, um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew this down with a zigzag stitch and half inch seam allowance. Um, and then flip it over and secure the other side. Okay, so once that part is done, um, you can see I zigzagged the trim on. And if you look closely, you can see that it's creating this like, uh, scrunched effect on the edge of the halter that's exactly what we want that's perfect so now you're going to take your trim and fold it back out like this um, if you would like to trim some of this edging off you can like some of the seam allowance you really don't have to but why not just don't cut too close to your thread
Okay, so now you're going to flip your trim over like this, fold it so that it kind of hits the middle and then fold it over again. You want it to line up with where the trim is underneath, but you also want it to overlap just a little bit so that when you sew it down, you can't see the other side of the trim. My stitching here is not perfect, probably have the wrong tension, um, but that will be taken care of with this top stitching that I'm about to do. So I'm just going to go all the way down the length of the trim, folding it over so that I can prepare to top stitch it in place. Okay, so that is how it looks. Isn't that cute? So now we're just going to top stitch it down with a straight stitch. You wanna get as close to the edge as possible. You wanna get as close to the edge as possible and make sure that as you're sewing that um, you're kind of, you're not sewing so that you're mesh is wavy you just want it to be taut looks good And so this is what we have now. Very pretty. This fabric is actually prettier than I thought it would be. I didn't like it at first, um, but it's cute. It's giving. looks so far we got both pieces of trim on and the next thing that we need to do is add the collar so you're just going to take your collar and fold it like this okay. right sides together mm -hmm. and pin it along the edge mm -hmm. and then you're going to sew it together um, using a half inch seam allowance and a zigzag stitch mm -hmm. I say, mm -hmm. thanks Kylie Charlie's angels come on. Uh, uh, uh. Question, tell me what you think about me. I got my own diamonds in the bottom. 
probably did my stitches because they were not good the first time around. I had a lot of skip stitches. Um, looks a little bit better now, but I think I had changed the tension to four. Um, I think that I probably need a different needle for this type of fabric. And I'm not actually wearing this dress anywhere, so I'm not worried about it, but that is something to keep in mind. Um, now I'm turning the collar in right side out. Um, I would typically do this with a loop turner. However, I don't know where it is. And if your piece of fabric is short enough, um, you should be able to do it with your hand. It just takes longer because you just got to inch it through bit by bit. But the name of the tool is a loop turner. If you're going to be doing a lot of pieces like this, I definitely suggest an investing one. And you should be able to get it from Joanne or Amazon for less than $10. Actually, I will put a link in the description box to where you can order it from Amazon. Okay. And so there is the collar. And it has been turned right side out. Now this... Um, is a little bit thin if you want it to be taller you can always increase the height of your pattern piece before you cut it out so next i'm just going to trim these threads off and i'm going to find the center of the collar just about right here I'm just going to pin this onto the halter so that it overlaps by about an inch half an inch three quarters of an inch something like that and I'm gonna sew this down with does it have the same okay a center i'm just making sure it's centered i'm gonna sew this down with a straight stitch just to secure it you want to take a look at the back um you might want to do two stitches uh typically i would be covering the collar up with uh more applique so it's up to you. You could do two stitches if you feel like that's going to be more secure. You could do one straight stitch along here and then just run over it twice. Um, regardless of how you decide to do it, just make sure that it, your stitches are very secure and that you have minimal chances of your garment ripping apart. Up my tension because it's a lot of layers. So that's one stitch and again you might want to do two so you could run back over that same stitch again and I think I do have the wrong needle because I can see that my stitches skipped a little bit um, it's a wonky fabric so you could do a second stitch across in the same spot Or if you want to, you could do another stitch like up here. It's really up to you. And now I'm going to trim these. And that pretty much concludes. Oh, it doesn't conclude. I have to add the hook and eye pieces. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is make my skirt and attach the halter to the skirt and add a zipper so that it can actually be a wearable garment. Oh, and then of course we gotta add appliques. So actually we have a lot left to do. <laughs> You're also gonna need a hook and an eye. 
Um, this is kind of like what you would find in your bra hooks. Um, this is going to be used to close the collar for the halter top. Okay, so we have our collar. I had to adjust the measurements, um, but it will be updated in the final version of the pattern. What we're going to do now is just turn the ends of the collar inward so that you don't have a raw edge. And this could be done um, prior to sewing it together as well. But you just want to turn this inward about half an inch. And we're just going to pin that right there while I figure out how to finish this off. And same thing over here, you're going to turn it inwards by about half an inch. Okay, so what I did was pin the uh, edges of the collar inwards. And now I'm going to take one of my hook and eye pieces. This is the hook piece. And I think it's supposed to be pointed inward, but I'm going to turn it outward because I don't want it to like hurt the neck. So now I'm taking the hook and eye piece. Well, this is the hook piece and I'm just going to nestle it between those layers and I'm going to take my thread and I'm just going to whip it back and forth to secure this piece into place. Fabric is a little bit difficult to get thread through, so you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. The problem is that my needle is really thick, so it's hard to get it to go through this like rubbery feeling fabric. I'm just gonna time lapse myself during the rest of this because it's gonna take a little while. Next, you're going to lay your front skirt piece down in front of you and pin your two back skirt pieces on top and then sew it together using a zigzag stitch and half inch seam allowance. I have laid my skirt out in front of me and I'm pinning the waist of the skirt to the waist of the halter top right sides together and sewing together using a zigzag stitch and half inch seam allowance. Trim off your excess thread. And then after you clean it up a little bit, you want to fold your seam allowance back and pin it down so that you can top stitch it and you won't have your seam allowance peeking through the illusion mesh. You're going to top stitch it down just using a straight stitch. Now I'm just installing my zipper. I use these transparent zippers I got from Bias Bespoke on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description box. First you install the first side, then you zip it up, and then you go back and install the second side. And then you zip the zipper back up again and sew the skirt together in the back down the middle. If you need a tutorial on how to insert the zipper, I'll leave that in the description box as well. We're almost done. Now I'm pinning the seam allowance, if you will, of the zipper into place just so that it's more secure and clean looking and then sewing that down with a straight stitch top stitch as well. And don't forget to clean up your project by just snip snipping any excess threads. Next, while the skirt is still turned inside out, you wanna just fold the bottom edge of your fabric up twice, pin it all the way around so that you can do your hem and just secure it with a straight stitch. Okay, so I don't have anything sewn down yet, but 
it's given i cut it to size i'm a size medium i cut it to a size medium and it fits um and then these are the appliques so i would not be like keeping this dress but i'm just gonna kind of whip them on real quick so i can get like a final look and probably take some pictures so that i can have a cover for my new pattern but here it is and mommy look cute thanks girl and then lastly, I'm just sewing the appliques on. I pinned them in place first. As you can see, I have a bra on the mannequin. That's because the mannequin was slightly smaller than my own measurements. So I added the bra just so that I could make sure the dress was being stretched out just as much as if I was wearing it so that the appliques will not be um, constricting the dress from stretching. So I'm at Helen's house and she tried the dress on. She's not gonna let me put her on camera. Absolutely. Maybe just the top. I'm gonna see if she'll let me put the top part on. Helen, what do you think? I love it. It's it's beautiful. Just not, you know, on me, but it's beautiful. Anyways, it served its purpose. I made sure that it fit her size. And so now I can finish my instructions and release the pattern. You can download your copy of this pattern at etsy.com slash shop slash Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.